welcome back to my channel di, 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 di. i am the global woman and if you are new here welcome we prayed for you and we are happy that you're here so here i talk about faith love food lifestyle my beautiful life taking you on a journey a beautiful journey sharing truths sharing awesome content wonderful stuff so you're in the right place yeah and today i want to talk about something that has been really on my heart for a long long time and why I decided to finally talk about it is because I saw something that triggered it again. <laughs> and I'm like, this really needs to be discussed. I don't know the topic. I think when I'm done with this video, I will know the topic I want to use for it. But it borders around how Christians are being silenced and how Christians are allowing themselves to be silenced. How on social media, it feels like um unbelievers or people that are not christians have the loudest voices and by the time christians wants to speak up about their own beliefs they are being shut down and everybody is quiet about it and it bothers me so much so if you would like to have this conversation with me keep watching so this is what triggered it right last weekend um one of the amazing amazing wonderful gospel singers that i love sumisola baby now sumisola okay got married to a wonderful husband who is also an amazing gospel singer um yinka okay and at their wedding something amazing happened i'm going to link the video they had a worship concert they had a moment of worship a moment of um you know you, you know that these people are actually children of god and they did not they're not shy about it right i'm not saying that if you don't have a worship concert at your wedding you are not a child of god no i didn't have a worship concert at my wedding and i'm a child of god what i'm trying to say is that these people are gospel singers gospel ministers and they made it known even on their wedding day and it was so beautiful to see now while me i was looking at this video and gushing over it and loving it i went to the comment section to type on oh, all of this and I, I was seeing comments that literally blew my mind no cap these comments blew my mind i was like am i on planet earth comments of people saying he will still cheat it does not matter if you people sang a christian song at the wedding and um, that does not mean your wedding is going to be successful and some people were saying things like ah don't invite me if you are going to turn um, your wedding to worship concert oh, don't invite me who will invite you before like they, they would not invite you because they don't know you and that mostly is not your value so why do they invite you right somebody else was saying i hope they've served the food before they started all this like people were literally saying things to bring this moment this beautiful moment down and the comment section was full of negativity full of bad vibes full of literal causes like people saying oh we are, come, we are going to come back to your marriage in one year if it was still old who did this to us like i'm bothered like i'm i'm this is me asking a question and i really i really wish 
people can like you know comment give me these comments answer these questions who did this to us why are we so comfortable wishing people evil why are we so comfortable just being in our homes behind our keypads and just typing whatever comes to our head why should that even come to your head in the first place when i see a wedding video or more i'm always in love because i love love like anybody that knows me knows that when it comes to things of god and things of love i am always there i'm number one because i feel like two people coming together to be one especially believers is something to celebrate so i'm always amazed astounded flabbergasted what other word? I'm always shocked when I see something I've stamped beautiful. Somebody else is being negative about it. So who did this to us? Because you will see some comments and you will know that this is coming from trauma. Ladies and gentlemen, because you had a bad relationship doesn't mean everybody will have a bad relationship. Because your parents' relationship or your parents' marriage had its ups and downs doesn't mean it has to be the same for everybody. I'm not saying marriage is a bed of roses or marriage is all mushy mushy. In marriage, there's going to be the times of, um, you know, quarrels that you need to fix. Because, I mean, two people coming together to be one are two individuals that are opposite like two different people which is why it's important to marry in god because it's god that knows who and who is best for each other right and when god is at the center of your marriage when these issues come when these quarrels come god can give you the insights tell you what to say what to do to fix your marriage so because social media has portrayed bad marriages so much everybody believes that that's that's how we're supposed to be and it is wrong. So this video is me really challenging Christians. Enough of the silence. Enough. Enough is enough. Unbelievers are always so loud about their beliefs. And when believers, Christians, children of God, start to talk about their beliefs, these people are going to try to bring us down, quieting us, like make us silent. And we also choose to be silent. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That should not happen. We shouldn't allow that to happen. Because before you know it, 10 years down the line, what am I even saying? Now, years down the line, in this current situation, because people have been silent for so long, good things are becoming, are becoming history. Great marriages, great relationships, great lives are becoming history just because the bad ones are always portrayed. You see that if you see in, on, on social media, if somebody posts that, ah, eh, so, 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 actor or actress, their marriage has broken, you will see comments, 10,000 comments, 50,000 likes. But post a, 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 a gospel minister and their partners that they are celebrating 40 or 50 years of marriage, the, the comment section is going to be like a desert. Just because we believe that mm, it's just one out of hundred, even if it is one out of hundred, even if it is one out of one million, why are you not quick to celebrate the good things? But when you see the bad ones, you don't be seeing comments like, "I thank God I don't believe in marriage. Our marriage is not cuckoo for me," and things like that. This is wrong. We are creating a very terrible mindset for the generations to come. We are creating a very negative thinking and mindset that we are like is is slowly becoming the norm and that is not what god created humanity for like sometimes i'm on social media and i'm like everybody needs a break from these apps because to be honest if you're on it for so long your mindset sometimes can get tampered with because imagine scrolling through 10 videos and out of those 10 videos is negativity 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 before you know it your mind has stored it such that when something positive is supposed to happen, your first reaction is going to be like, ah, what if it spoils? What if it breaks? What if nothing good comes out of it? That is because you've been feeding your mind with negative information. And for me, I follow, I unfollow rather some a lot of pages quickly. If I see that this blog, all they know how to post is bad news, bad news, bad news. I unfollow because I need to keep my mind safe and sane. Honestly, my prayer is that may we never get to the point where evil will overshadow good because the carriers of the message of evil are louder than the carriers of the message of good. And this is why if you have great things happening in your lives, don't, um, as, as, as you would like to share, 
right so what i mean is i'm not saying you should bring all your life on social media i know not everybody's a social media person not everybody um is 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 keen about you know posting anything on social media but as much as possible even if it's on your whatsapp status let people know that good things are happening in your life and in your marriage especially the marriage part because you will see things on social media and you know you are just trying to share a beautiful moment in your marriage and somebody is saying uh what if it's it breaks what if i'm not thinking about what if my marriage breaks because i know that my marriage cannot break like it's not in mine it's not in my thinking faculty at all so why would you want to wish that for somebody else i don't get it i honestly don't get it so please christians this is my own challenge right i know that god put us in this world to preach the gospel to um speak to unbelievers to bring people to him and while we are doing that we must ensure that we are not being silenced and this is what i mean i'm going to say it again when you have come when you see comment sections like that don't just scroll and pass don't don't i don't know how to put it because 100 people are commenting that ah what if this, this marriage is still break and worship concert does not mean that your marriage will be good you that you're a believer don't see those comment sections and pass type it there their marriage will last in jesus name godly marriages exist good marriages exist don't be silenced don't look away don't look and pass because these people are always very loud about their own beliefs. But when Christians try to bring their own beliefs, they begin to shut us up, shut us down. And before you know it, we also now hide in our cage. People don't share about their good marriages anymore. You know, we're silenced. And the moment good is silenced, bad becomes the order of the day. And it should not be. Because what bothers me so much is that I see weddings where... I see videos of weddings where people invite other ministers, did I say ministers, <laughs> other artists, you know, I don't want to mention names because, I mean, I listen to just gospel songs to be honest, but of course, I know the names of secular artists because they are always loud and everywhere, right? So, people would invite whoever they choose to invite to their weddings and turn the wedding to a clubhouse, to a mini concert or whatever they call it or whatever the circular uh, musicians call it and nobody's angry you're not angry oh. you will see it you will type it ah eh, can you call you'll be giving them the ale you'll be hailing them ha ah, the wedding of my dream ha ah, if me too i can call so 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 to my wedding it will be good you will not complain about that one no. but why is it that is the one that they are singing worship song or they choose to turn their own weddings to revival, or they choose to invite gospel artists. That's the one you're not angry about. Why? 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 You did your own. We did not talk. We did not complain. In our closet, we are praying for God to touch your heart, right? Because there's some wedding videos you will see and you'll be like, why? Why? Why does this have to be at the wedding? But that's not the conversation for today. But we are seeing your own. We do not complain. We now decide to do our own. You are now complaining, castigating, bringing people down, sending bad messages, bad vibes. And if you are here and you are listening to this and you do all of these things, please repent. Repent because it is totally wrong. The way people bully others on social media needs to be studied so maybe we can find a solution it is wrong it is extremely wrong to just type whatever comes to your head and bully people just because nobody knows you or nobody knows your face and stuff if somebody is doing something at their own wedding their own wedding why is it your business why will you now because of that begin to wish them bad when somebody invited them secular musicians to their wedding you should not type that ah this wedding with this wedding what if it does not last this wedding but it's the one that they are praising god you are now saying eh, it's not a guarantee that the wedding will even last one year it's not ah you need healing and I'm not saying this sarcastically. I'm saying this in truth. If you find yourself in the position where the first thing that comes to your mind is negative energy, negative words, negative vibes, you need healing. Because it means that there's a trauma somewhere. It means that something has sown that kind of seed in you. And you need to uproot it. You need to uproot it because if you don't, you will think that... Life 
cannot be good. And that's a lie. Because God created things to be good for us. God, God created everything for our pleasure, for our good. Hey, people. <laughs> it's sad, <laughs> to be honest. It's sad. I'm, I'm, I'm not angry. I'm not angry. I'm just bothered and concerned. Because this is, is alarming. Because I remember a couple of weeks ago, um, there was a video on a page. I can't remember what page it is now. And the video was like they were asking a boy. Um, it was a co comedy video. And um, they were asking a boy, where do you see yourself at 25 or something like that? And the guy said that um, he wants to have graduated secondary school, graduated university, gotten a job and get married. And I kid you not. 90% or even 90, 98% were like, should we tell him for where, for this Nigeria, it's not possible, uh, 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 be dreaming, yeah, just dream. I know it was a coming video, but those comments will make you know that if it was a, if it was a reality show or whatever, these are the same comments we're going to get. Then I said, I, I commented, because me, you cannot silence me, oh. If I believe that something good can happen, I'm gonna say it. If you like attack me, mm -hmm, I'm in my house, you cannot come and beat me. So I said, why is everybody saying should we tell him? Have we forgotten that we don't only have federal universities in Nigeria? Some people graduate um, secondary school at 14, get into a private university, and this was the thing I was analyzing in that comment, because my comment was long. <laughs> they get into university at um, 14, 15, they graduate at 18, 19, right? So let's even say a guy, for example, graduates at 18, 19, goes to youth service, at 20, is a copper already. If that guy is 25, Abby, a lot of people land good jobs almost immediately. So let's say 21, he got his first job, 22, okay, I think the guy mentioned that he wants to be a millionaire as well. Who says between 21 and 24, you cannot be a millionaire? Millionaire is million, one millionaire, Abby. <laughs> And get married, right? So I tried to analyze that. And I even said to them that even me, that went to a federal university, or Bafemi Awolowo University, with all our strikes and everything, I graduated at 20. I graduated at 20. Let me calculate it well. Yeah, I was 20 when I graduated. But later that year, I became 21. So I graduated at 20. So I'm like, why are we saying these things as though nobody has had a good life like achieve a lot of things before 25 i said because you did not have that experience doesn't mean this guy cannot have the experience or somebody else cannot have the experience i now said if at all we want to advise this person all we can all we should say or most of the things we should say is don't be too rigid with your plan be flexible things can happen that is a better advice than outright cancellation so I believe that's a better advice. Ah, advise the young people that see, I understand you want to achieve so much at 25, but ensure that in your journey you are not too so strict with yourself, you are not too so rigid in case anything changes, you know, and stuff like that. Instead of telling them their dreams are not valid, instead of telling them um, it's not possible, you are just a dreamer uh, in this Nigeria, who says good things don't come out from Nigeria? Who says good things don't happen in Nigeria? Like, why? And come and see how people came for me. Hey, God. Oh. <laughs> ah! If they say <laughs> that was my first experience of social media bullshit. Because under my comments, there were almost, a, almost 60, 70 comments. And the bulk of it was, was, uh, yeah, she beats because you are, a, like, somebody was even trying to say, and she beats because you are a lady. That's why you got a lot of advantages and stuff. Literally saying that women, you um, because the person even said it's because you're a beautiful lady, so you found your way. Mm, we know what you're trying to say, but it's prostitution, and it's a lie. I'm a child of God, glory to Jesus. Everything I have, I say it a lot, and it's this is with humility that all I've achieved in this life, I thank God for it, and that's why you can never silence me when it comes to the things of God because I know how God has helped me, and I know how God is still helping me, right. So these people were just attacking me. Uh, you should be a trust fund kid. Uh, it's because your parents are rich. I say I went to whole AU. My school fees in part two, part three, part four was twenty twenty thousand. So everything that sends me to school, school fees wise, was less than two hundred thousand. So where is the trust fund kid? Where is the rich kid? Even if my parents are rich, I say I went to whole AU. 
and I graduated at 20. Why? Is it, is it, your, is it your goal? Is it your age? Like people were literally arguing and saying, I'm lying, I'm capping, I'm whatever. All me I'm saying is, don't advise the young generation wrongly. Don't tell them that their dreams are not valid. Don't make them feel like they are not allowed to dream. Even if yours did not go according to plan, that does not mean someone else's will not go according to plan. And that is why, if I had to ask my husband this question, that why is it that when some people don't achieve something that they um, dreamt of achieving, they feel like nobody else should achieve it. I feel like it is a very terrible mindset because I did not make it, so somebody else should not make it. That's that's not just terrible. That's a very negative mindset, and it is not fair. And you shouldn't do that. I've had a lot of things that I've tried to do in this life that I did not achieve. But when somebody asks me for advice or mentions something similar, I tell them, see, put your head to it, go for it, you can do it. You can do it. That can do spirit must always be there at all times in our lives. So my message to you today, everybody watching me, Christians, on Christians, wherever you are watching me, wherever you are watching me, let us have a positive mindset to life. Let us have a positive mindset to life. Like it takes you nothing to be positive, to be honest. Because the moment the neg negativity becomes the ruling factor in your life, it causes a lot of problems. Because even for you, you won't think anything good can come out of your life. You won't think anything good can come out of the life of somebody else. And before you know it, when they say generational causes, it's not because anybody is doing them in the village. Imagine, let me paint this scenario. Imagine a man maybe because of the challenges he had growing up or whatnot, just believes that nothing good can come out of his life. And he gets that mentality. He keeps that mentality. If he gets married, he won't believe that his marriage can be successful because he is not just positive, right? So he won't believe his marriage will be successful. And at the end of the day, because it's what you believe that comes to pass. At the end of the day, his marriage is going to have issues. His, he and his wife will be separated. They'll give back to children that are from this broken home. And because as the man or even the woman, you are not passing down these negative vibes to your children, your children also take it. And they believe that, ah, my father did not achieve much, which I cannot achieve much. I respect and honor parents that did not have a good background. Maybe they came from a poor home, but they ensure that their children are good and their children turn out well. I respect and honor these people because they know that, ah, what I did not achieve, my children must achieve. That's why you see some people, like I watched this movie, Sister amazing movie this woman knew that she did not achieve a lot of things growing up but she ensured that children will not suffer whereas there are some people that are going to be in that same situation and because of this negative mindset believe that in our family nobody passes school starts i know we've heard of stories like this before somebody will just say in our family nobody goes to university and you keep on passing it. So when we say generational causes, generational um, problem, it comes from generational trauma. It's trauma. It's trauma. It's, 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 it's negative, negativity, like being, being encapsulated in negativity. So this man is passing down negative vibes to his children. His children are going to grow up thinking that my parents did not have a good home. Means I cannot have a good home. And what they think is what will come to pass. They will not have a good home. That one, so they will pass it down to their children. Then you will now see a family tree where four generations, no good home, nobody was rich, there was problem, one thing, one thing, one thing. And nobody cost them. It was not village people. It was a negative mindset. So not every problem in your life is from anybody in the village attacking you. It starts from your mind. It's your mind. It's you that are attacking yourself. You are the one attacking yourself and you need to fix it and fix it fast. Especially if you are still young. Fix it now so that you don't bring this same trauma into marriage and then into fatherhood or motherhood. And before you know it, your family is now known for this thing. And it comes from where? Small message like that on comment section. What if their marriage don't last? How are you sure their marriage will last? Uh, you cannot achieve anything in Nigeria at 25. Uh, uh, it's just cap. Uh, something, something. That's where it starts from. Because you that type that their marriage will not last. When you want to marry, you also think that, ah, what if my marriage too does not last? And before you know it, those problems will arise. We keep growing, we keep growing and... Everything will last then. So, please, let's keep a positive mindset. Stop bullying people on social media. 
Stop bullying people on social media. Find the healing, please. I beg in the name of God. If you are from a broken home, if you've had challenges in your life, if you know that, tr and you have to be honest with yourself, if you know that truly life has not been good to you, you've had problems and stuff, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you had to go through all of this. And trust me, God does not want that for you. You need to find healing. Please find healing. Um, um, deliver yourself from such a mindset. Deliver yourself from such low thinking. Because no matter what, your life can still be better. No matter what you've gone through, your life can still be good. Everybody has a story. Everybody, including myself. Everybody has a story that sometimes they will not even want to share. But they ensure that that story did not make them. That story did not become the ruling factor in their life. That bad story did not become the ruling factor in their lives. They ensure that they worked on it and became better people. So you can do the work. Put in the work. Put in the work and deliver yourself from whatever situation it is that you found yourself. And I know that you can say it's easier said than done. Yes, it might be easier to say. But all I have for you is prayers and words. But if you are determined, trust me, you can achieve it. Whether you're in Nigeria or not. I know somebody will say, eh, she is because you're in the UK. That's why you're saying, see, I've achieved more. So far in my current life situation now, I've achieved what I've achieved, like my, what's that English? The things I've achieved more, if I want to list, list of achievements, happened in Nigeria. I'm new in the UK, right? So I'm just trying to write my new UK story. But so far, currently in my life, I've achieved more things. I achieved more things rather in Nigeria than I have so far here. I know I'm still going to achieve more in the UK, but as I said, I'm new here. I've lived the the first 20 plus years of my life in nigeria and i can tell you categorically that i achieved so much thanks to god so don't think that uh, it's because i'm in the uk that's what i'm advising mm -mm. i've achieved i achieved so much in nigeria that i'm proud of i can begin to list but that's not the reason for this video all i'm trying to say is that no matter where you are don't think that don't think that eh, eh, the country is so bad see no matter how bad a country or a system is people that are making it are still making it that's why it's important to know the Lord. Ah, this one, we can never overemphasize it. It's important to know God because He's the one that can open your eyes to ideas and opportunities that will make you thrive and be successful. Honestly. Second people I'm addressing now, Christians, wake up. It's time for us to wake up. The battle is no longer in the mission field. The battle starts from social media. Don't allow anybody to shut you up. In fact, that story I was sharing about this old 25 achieve whatever. Somebody that was also attacking me and and I can't remember our, our own comment. I now I now replied. I can't remember the reply I made. She now said that ah that she, she's just following people to cruise that she also graduated university at 20 and got married at 23, blah blah blah. I now said to her that I honestly would have preferred if you had shared this your story first instead of joining the crowd to say it's not possible. So that's another thing. Many of us have good stories, good testimonies, but because the bulk of the people are sharing bad news, we also join them and join the... Um, what's that word they use? Literally join the crowd and also make fun of the situation. Whereas you have a good testimony that you should share to also encourage somebody. So believers, Christians, don't don't allow anybody to shut you up. That thing that you believe, the God that you believe, begin to proclaim. And the only way to proclaim God is not just by preaching the gospel outrightly and saying give your life to Christ. You proclaim God through your testimonies. You proclaim God through your testimonies. If you've had a good life, share it. If God has saved you from something, share it. If you've had a good marriage so far, share it. If you've had good work experience, share it. If you've, if you've had great testimonies living in Nigeria, share it. The more we share, the more we proclaim God's glory. The more we share testimonies, the more, the more we let people know that this God that we serve is good. And when you're on social media and somebody is saying hey, there's no good marriage, there's no write it in the comments. Don't just laugh and scroll and pass. Don't join the multitude to do evil. Write it in the comments. I've had a good marriage so far and my marriage will continue to last. Let us begin to spread positivity in the comment section of pages and blogs. Even if you are the only good like that day's own, I was my comment was the only positive comment I found. Even if you are the only good comment in that comment section, 
share it, put it, put it. It starts from one. When one person shares something good, somebody else too will say. It was after I commented and said my own and shared my story, what I achieved and stuff. Somebody was now saying, ah, it will, you know somebody that achieved. You know, people were now coming small, small to be saying, ah, they know somebody too that got my, uh, that achieved so much and can come at 21, you know? So I'm like, why didn't these people speak up first? It's because they felt they were going to be attacked. Me, I collected the attack for all of us. Oh, yeah, you will be sharing your testimony. And I'm saying, and I'm telling it to you too today. If you have testimonies, which I know you have, because everybody in God always has a testimony, begin to share it. It doesn't have to be on Instagram. It doesn't have to be on Facebook. If you are not on any social media platform, share it when you meet people on the road. Share it everywhere. Because sometimes the way to win the heart of people to God is not by opening Bible and saying John 3.16. It's by showing them in your life. I was telling somebody one time that there was a time in school that I had a very bad result, and which was shocking because I'm like, I didn't expect anything less than a B in this course. And I had an E. I tried to work on it, um, uh, speak to the lecturer, but you know, I didn't want to have lecturer issues and stuff. And I was telling God, why did this thing happen? And God literally was like, don't worry, it's for a reason. And two, two years or so down the line, me that my first GP in school was like two point something, boom, skyrocketed. At the end of the day, I graduated with a second class upper. And I met somebody that in her part one also was having that issue current. I think I was already in part three at that time. And I was able to encourage her to say, you know what? Your own results now is even better than what I had in part one. And look at where I am now. God has helped me. And she was encouraged. She was happy. So sometimes when when things go on in our lives and you're like, God, why? God, why me? God, something, something. It's because God wants to use your life to show results. Like when somebody says, I know how you feel. If you don't really know how they feel, you can't even say, I know how you feel. So to this lady, I was able to tell her that I know how you feel because I've almost failed before. I had an E. It was not F. She had a D or something that was really breaking up. I said, I had an, I had an E. Look at me now. I'm now having B's and A's. God helped me. I finally got it with the second class upper. That is a testimony. So anybody listening will be like, wow. So even if I have a D or an E in part one, it does not mean that everything is over. That is the kind of testimony that you should be sharing. And never remove the fact that it was God that helped you. Because me, I am what I am because of Christ. I cannot say I've achieved anything in this life by my own doing all because of god and i always give him the glory so please christians wake up wake up the day the day i love this j mikey song that says the day the day like wake up stand up everybody stand up like hey we are thinking that ah uh, the end time is when antichrist will fall down from wherever they will fall down from no the end time is when social media is full of negativity and evil and we too we are quiet. We are not sharing anything good. We are in the end times. So let's begin to start. Not everybody will go to the mission field. Your own mission field is that Instagram. You are on Instagram 10 hours a day. I am not sharing any good news about God. Those people that are sharing their own bad negativity, castigating Christians, you, they are castigating your brother and your sister. And you are silent about it. Are you proud of yourself? <laughs> now I sound like a teacher. But to be honest, so to wrap this up please guys please please this is me begging don't be found in don't don't, don't be consumed with so much negativity that it even reflects in what you wish others no that's a very bad place to be very bad place to be but if you are here and you want to be sincere with yourself if you are one of those people that bully people on social media or always say something bad will happen to other people. Please find healing. Find healing. Because that's not life. Ah, that's not life. And Christians, again, 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 I say, proclaim what you believe. Don't care if they shut you up. Don't care if you are the only person that has a good comment in a comment section of 10,000 people. Proclaim what you believe. Share the good news of God. If a friend of yours is doing very well, doing celebrating something good, share it. Celebrate your friends. Let people know that uh, the life of Christians is not, is not a caged or boring life. As believers, children of God, we have good lives. We look good. We smell nice. We live, we live a fantastic life because God is good. So keep sharing.
God is good. Let people know that God is good. God is good. God is good. God is good. And whenever you find people bringing all these comments like he will still cheat and there's no good marriage, let them know there are good marriages. There was a time somebody was sharing her parents' 30, 30 years wedding anniversary or something. And I put in the comment section of that video that this is the example of marriage that a lot of us have close to us. But still, we, we decide to believe the bad news of marriage on social media. And a lot of people agree to what I said. A lot of us have parents who have lived together for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. But still, we will join them on Instagram because our celebrities do not have good marriages. We will join them and say, ah, marriage is a scam. Marriage is not good. My own marriage is not a scam. If you are married like me in a relationship, decree after me or declare after me. <laughs> My marriage is not a scam. My marriage will be successful. God is writing a beautiful story with my life and the life of my partner, life of my husband. My marriage will succeed. We are going to bring forth godly seeds that are going to give glory to God. My marriage is blessed. I will celebrate 5 years, 10 years, 20 years, 50 years if God, if Jesus tarries. My marriage is a wonderful one. My marriage is, an, is, is a good example to other people. These are the things you should be proclaiming in your life. Don't join them to type marriage is a scam. And for some of you, you think that you are just, you are just joking. Ah, there's power in the tongue. There's power in your words. There's power in the tongue. So if you are typing marriage is a scam, there's no good marriage. There's no whatever. You are literally saying it. And that's what you believe. Before you know it, that's what will come to pass. So always say what you mean and mean what you say. If you know you have a good marriage, never go to social media and join them to say marriage is a scam. If you know you wish a good marriage, if you're not yet married, don't join them and say, hey, we still cheat, hey, there's no good marriage. There's power in your tongue. The first prophet over anyone is themselves. God has given you power in your tongue. Whatever you proclaim, whatever you say is what comes to you, is what comes to pass. So don't joke. Don't join them to joke. Uh, marriage is a scam. Adult to the scam. Uh, Nigeria is this. Nigeria is that. Don't join them to say negative things because this atmosphere, it they suck the things we they say and it gives it to us back. So affirmations and confessions can never be overemphasized. Proclaim the things that you want to say. And to everyone that is married, godly marriages, Christian marriages, marriages that are signed, sealed, and you know, delivered by God. To everybody married that is watching this video, I wish you a wonderful marriage because marriage is beautiful. <laughs> and to everyone in a relationship trusting God for a great marriage, don't be bamboozled or discouraged by the bad news about marriage that we hear on a daily basis. Look inwards. That your pastor, that him and his wife, your parents, those people that have good marriages, they are the ones that you should be taking advice from. They are the ones that you should be looking up to, right? And above all, pray to God. Even if around you you don't find any example of good marriage, it's your time to rewrite the story. Some of you, it's on your head that God needs to break generational problems, traumas, and causes. It's on your head. So, Ebo Riduro, it means put your head down. Let God use you to rewrite the story of your family, to rewrite the story of your lineage, that deliverance that you need. It comes from little things like confessing positive things and, you know, praying the word of God and believing in God. So, please, guys, please. Please, let's do better. Let's do better in our words, deeds, and actions. Let's do better. And I pray that God will help all of us in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching. Um, it is well, by God's grace. But Christians, take up the challenge and begin to proclaim the goodness of God. See you next time.